you know, I sometimes talk about the the difference between a human as a human was designed to be um, and a German shepherd. Now, the reason I use the German shepherd is I am a big German shepherd fan. Um, I, I love dog training. I've trained a bunch of them. I've had, I've had five German shepherds that I've trained and um, I love it. I think they're just amazing dogs. Well, Long story short, we were getting another German Shepherd, and we ended up uh, <laughs> we ended up switching our family. Um, we, our last one died many, many years, 10, 11 years ago. And so we went out to lunch, and we came home with a Rottweiler Doberman puppy. Um, yeah, don't ever pick one up at a rescue place when you have a five-year-old and a seven-year-old with you at lunch. You're going to come home with it. And that was Riley, and she was with us for 10 years. And during, that, during the course of that time, I fell in love with the Doberman side of her. And so now we have Finley. Finley's our new Doberman. But here's the point. Finley, Dobermans are smart. They're way up there too. But German Shepherds are way up there and they are smart dogs. What they can be trained to do is incredible. But here's the difference in you and a German Shepherd. One of the differences. You've never seen a German Shepherd do anything except what they are you know, instinctually wired to do. Now they have some reasoning skills, you know, they do have some reasoning skills and they can kind of figure things out. But you never see them, you know, like when they bark, they're just wired to bark, right? Unless they've been taught don't bark, right? At a certain time, they're wired. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna do what their patterning and their wiring teaches them to do, okay? Somebody walks by, they see the, car go by or the person on the sidewalk where well, they, they start barking but here's what you don't see a german shepherd do you don't see them bark and then stop and go i wonder if that was helpful did i bark at the right time does that serve my owner well with what they're trying to do with their neighbors i know i'm supposed to bark at burglars that wasn't a burglar but i barked anyway and and I want, and, and you know, the other thing is, I, I wonder if barking right then is going to get me closer to where I want to be next week. And it's particularly on Thursday. I wonder if that helps me get closer to that goal. See, they don't do that. And the chief thing there is uh, really uh, twofold. One is they have, they don't have the ability to get above their patterning and their wiring get above it and think about their performance, to think about their, you know, behavior in a way, in a way where they're looking forward to alter their behavior for something that's unseen yet, all right? Like a result they want to get. And the second big difference is kind of related to that time dimension specifically not altering their behavior past that they don't really think about longer term planning than what's going on right there they don't even think you know gosh i better preserve some energy this morning because we're going on a long hike this afternoon they don't even think that far ahead okay so you unlike the german shepherd you are created in the image of god now, what that means is in the, literally, you know, the word, you know, you get in all the different meanings is the image means the likeness. In other words, you're created to be like he is. You're like a mini version without the omnis. You know, you know stuff. God's omni-knowing. You're present in one place. God's omnipresent. You have power. You're potent. You have self-control. You have agency. God's omnipotent, Right. So we're not, we're not without all these cool things. We just don't have the omnis, which is a good thing. And there's a lot of people I know that I wouldn't want to be in control of the universe. But sometimes there's one big you know, thing that God has given humans that we don't use. And that is the ability to sit down and observe get above our behaviors, get above what we're doing, 
and ask ourselves the question, is my barking getting me closer to where I want to be next Thursday? One of my favorite verses, and you see it all the way throughout the Bible, God keeps saying this over and over and over and over. He says, observe your ways, the way you're behaving, the way you're talking to people. The way you're listening, the way you're showing up or not showing up, the way we're reacting instead of responding, the way that we are using some sort of structure and discipline in our life to get to some result we want to get to. So, in my travels, what do I mean by that? Is my just sauntering through life. Um, I get the opportunity because of my work, I get the opportunity to work with, because I do mostly, you know, consulting work with kind of, let's call them high performers in, you know, in business and in sports and entertainment and other arenas. And I get to watch them and see how they work. And let me tell you, there's a difference. There's a difference in how people that achieve things work and live. And when I say achieve, I mean both in career-wise as well as personal lives. There's a difference in how really fruitful people live versus kind of like, you know, average Joe. And one of those big differences, there are differences. One of those big differences is the really fruitful people get above their barking frequently and they observe it. And not only do they observe it, they observe it and ask the question in relation to next Thursday, is what I'm doing today going to get me closer to where I want to be next Thursday? Now, hopefully by now you picked up Thursday as a metaphor. So whatever that means to you, a month from now, six months from now, a year from now, five years from now, the end of your life. You know, one of my favorite verses, because it orders life, is where David says, God, teach me to number my days. And the people that I know that are most fruitful life, they, lives, they have num they've been numbering their days since they were kind of hit consciousness, which usually happens around age 30. Meaning, I got to start planning. I got to start planning because time is going by. What do I need to do now to be where I want to be when I'm 35, when I'm 40, when I'm 50, when I'm 60? What do I want my tombstone to say? It's a big exercise a lot of them do, actually. So I want to give you just a little assignment today. How about observing your ways? Now, one more little tip about that is this, that just to observe your ways, that's kind of like, you know, okay, I'm going to observe, I'm going to observe a sports event. Okay. Well, where, I don't know. Let's go for a walk. Think some kids are playing a pickup game down on the corner. No, I'm talking observing your ways with a purpose in mind that your ways are related to some specific outcome that you want in your life it's called a result it's called a fruit in other words all of our effort should produce something even even if it's vacation you know a lot of people go on vacation at the end of their vacation, they didn't produce the result of relaxation, restoration, recreation. They stayed on their phone the whole time, talking to the office. See, we got to figure out what do we want the outcome of this to be? They go on their vacation, didn't get any closer to their kids or their loved ones or whoever they went with. What do you want the outcomes to be? I want you thinking in your life about outcomes outcomes give you some 
ways to think about it. Remember our pie we talked about on the show? There's three pieces to the pie in your life. There's the clinical piece, how you feel, your stress levels, your degree of happiness and joy, fulfillment versus you know, things like depression and anxiety and all the stuff we suffer from clinically doesn't make us feel good. Addictions, habit patterns. What do you want the outcome to be there? If you got anxiety or fears now, do you want to have those a year from now? Well, then we need to observe our ways. What are we doing now? It's going to make it better on Thursday. It's the only way it happens. I don't know anybody with a successful life that just kind of uh, closed their eyes and landed there. And some people in some areas they do. You know, they wake up one morning, you know, Uncle Louie has left them enough to live on. <laughs> that happens. Or we stumble into other stuff. And I'm telling you, you've heard the saying, opportunity <laughs> meets with those who are prepared. Or if you're not prepared, opportunity fizzles. So every day is about really preparing ourselves, but specifically preparing yourself and observing those ways and doing what is going to be needed to bring about the result in that side of the pie. So if you want to feel different next year, then let's look at how am I spending my time and what degree of my time and energy is being invested in something that's going to make me feel different six months from now. Okay, Your relationships. Observe your ways. Take your marriage, for example. Let's say you just spend yourself and you come home and you just flop into the house, right? Well, I don't think that's what he or she on the other side, your stakeholders of that relationship, do they really want the leftovers only of you? Is that a pattern? Where your kids and your spouse, even sometimes your friends, they just get this person like, ah, just let me disappear and veg. I mean, certainly we need that, but shouldn't we plan before next Thursday? By next Thursday, I want them really being fulfilled, fulfilled by being on the other side of a relationship with me. I want my kids putting their heads down on the pillow going, ah, I'm so glad I got to see dad. I had so much fun with dad. I had so much fun, you know, or the same thing with your spouse. You know, we want to create like good results for our stakeholders. The people that have a stake in our behavior. So think about your stakeholders, your work team members. Is my Am I observing my behavior and asking, would I want to be on a team with me? Would I want to be on the other side of this behavior? If, if I want something, if I want to have good relationships, would anybody be able to tell that? Could I get convicted of that? in a court of law? Is there enough evidence? So observe your ways. That's the message for today. Get above these areas of life. And then third piece of the pie, I should mention, is your performance, you know, like reaching goals and dreams. That is very doable in life. Every human is designed to do it. But we got to observe our ways. Are our activities that we're doing every day getting us closer to what we're trying to achieve? It's not rocket science it's not rocket science this is something you want little children to learn <clears throat> what are you doing well i want to go out and play but i know mommy or i know daddy clean up clean up everybody clean up because we got to clean up before we play right yeah that's observing your ways and then they realize they don't get to go play until they put the things they're playing with away first Kids can do this because they're creating the image of God. Problem is, a lot of us act like kids that haven't learned to do it. And we just find ourselves ending up somewhere in a relationship or ending up somewhere in the way we feel or ending up somewhere 
in some important area of life. So observe your ways. Um, guess what that takes? It takes time and space. I'll give you my little way of doing it. Um, the big way is yearly. Okay, I take some time and days at the end of the year, I do an audit. Where did my time and energy go? And was that time and energy spent in the in the key areas that would drive the needle in the areas that I'm trying to get results in for the key stakeholders? That includes, you know, professional as well as, as personal. And then what I do is I kind of establish that vision and those goals for the next year in those areas and then work backwards and see what kind of inputs of time and energy is it going to take in those various arenas to do that. Take, you know, marriage, for example. Well, let's put in the times in the calendar first that are going to be big infusions into that. You know, Tori and I try to get away at least. I mean, it doesn't have to be expensive. You can go to you know motel six or something but just make sure do you have do you have a weekend away every quarter you can get somebody to keep the kids just drive down the road some of our best getaways have been when the kids were little were literally one mile away but you put those in the calendar what about a family meeting every week and then some kind of accountability look at that anyway your life is going to work when you work at how you're organizing your effort to get there. Okay, there we go. Fun, fun, fun stuff. I do think it's fun. It's fun to live a planned life instead of a life that happens to us.